Lee Wainwright was not, by any stretch of the imagination, a man of consequence. He was a junior technician at the Intergalactic Communications Hub, which was a fancy way of saying he spent most of his days fixing malfunctioning transmissions and explaining to absolutely no one that, yes, the problem was indeed on their end. His life was a series of unremarkable events, punctuated only by the occasional pleasure of a night out at the Nebula Lounge, the seediest, most wonderfully disreputable dive bar this side of the Milky Way. On this particular night, Artie had managed to do something truly remarkable. He had somehow charmed the most exotic creature in the room, an alien girl whose name he couldn't quite pronounce, but which sounded something like Zilara. She had skin that shimmered like stardust and eyes that seemed to contain entire galaxies. She was, in short, out of his league, and he knew it. But as luck or perhaps the universe's twisted sense of humor would have it, Zylara seemed utterly captivated by Arty. The two had danced, laughed, and drank something called Quantum Fizz, which, according to the bartender, was banned in several star systems for its tendency to make time feel like it was unraveling. The night had blurred into a whirlwind of colors, sounds, and sensations, and before Artie knew it, they were back at his dingy apartment, a place so cluttered and grimy it could legally qualify as a biohazard. The next morning, Artie awoke with a start, his head pounding like a hyperdrive engine on the fritz. He groaned and squinted at the harsh sunlight streaming through the window, only to freeze in shock. There, lying next to him in his bed, a bed that was more like a lumpy collection of springs held together by sheer willpower, was Zilara. She was wide awake, looking at him with those mesmerizing eyes and an amused smile on her lips. Good morning, human, she purred, her voice like the hum of a distant star. Artie blinked, still half convinced he was dreaming. Uh, morning? Zilara stretched languidly, her skin catching the light in a way that made her glow. That was quite a night, she said, her tone suggesting that quite was a vast understatement. Artie nodded dumbly, his brain still trying to catch up with the situation. Usually, when he woke up after a night like this, the girl, human or otherwise, was long gone, leaving only a vague sense of embarrassment and a hangover that could fell an elephant. But Zilara was still here, and she seemed perfectly content to stay. Um, not to be rude or anything, Artie began, his voice hesitant. But why are you still here? Zilara tilted her head, her expression curious. Why wouldn't I be? Well, Artie said, gesturing vaguely around his apartment. Most women, human women, I mean, they usually leave. Zilara followed his gesture, her gaze sweeping over the room. The apartment was, to put it mildly, a disaster. Dirty dishes were piled high in the sink, a small army of cockroaches was holding a conference near the fridge, and the toilet seat in the bathroom was not only up, but also unflushed. Dust and grime clung to every surface, and the air had a faint lingering odour of something that might have once been food, but had long since evolved into a new life form. Ah, I see, Zilara said, nodding as if she had just solved a particularly tricky puzzle. You're concerned about the state of your living quarters. Artie flushed with embarrassment. Yeah, I mean, it's not exactly... Well, it's a mess. I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to leave. Zilara laughed, a sound like a thousand tiny wind chimes tinkling in a gentle breeze. Oh, Artie, you're adorable. Do you really think something like this would bother me? Well, yeah, Artie admitted. It bothers most people. Zilara shook her head, her expression softening. Artie, I've travelled across galaxies, visited planets where the atmosphere is made of acid, and stayed in places where the concept of hygiene is entirely theoretical. Your apartment is nothing compared to that. Artie frowned. But the mess, the dirt, the cockroaches... Zilara waved a hand dismissively. I took care of it. Artie blinked. You... what? 
Zilara raised her wrist, revealing a sleek metallic device that she wore like a bracelet. This is my handy-dandy wrist device, she explained with a hint of pride. Artie stared at the wrist device, its surface shimmering with faint lights that pulsed in a rhythm that seemed oddly comforting. He wasn't sure what to say. You use that to clean? Zylara nodded, smiling as if she'd just revealed a particularly clever secret. Exactly. This little gadget can do wonders. It's a multifunctional tool. Cleans, repairs, even reorganizes matter at a molecular level. I gave your apartment a good once-over while you were still sleeping. Artie's eyes widened in disbelief. You cleaned my apartment? With that thing? Zilara's smile widened, and she gave a little shrug. Why not? I found that it's much easier to enjoy a place when it's not covered in grime and clutter. Plus, it was the least I could do after such a memorable night. Artie's mind raced as he tried to process everything. He glanced around the room, and for the first time, he noticed that the familiar layer of dust that had coated everything like a second skin was gone. The dishes were clean and neatly stacked, the cockroaches had mysteriously vanished, and even the faint smell of rot that had long since become part of the apartment's ambience had disappeared. The place looked livable. He swallowed hard, feeling both amazed and slightly mortified. I... I don't know what to say. Zilara leaned in closer, her eyes twinkling with mischief. You could start by telling me why you're so surprised. Did you really think I'd just run off like some human girl after a night of fun? Artie scratched his head, feeling a bit sheepish. Well, yeah, that's usually how it goes. I mean, I don't exactly have the best track record with women. They usually take one look at my place in the morning and bolt. Zilara chuckled softly, a sound that was strangely soothing. Oh, Artie, you're not giving yourself enough credit. Last night was, well, let's just say it was mind-blowing. Literally. Artie's face flushed crimson. Uh, thanks, I guess. Zylara's expression softened again, and she reached out to gently touch his cheek. Artie, you're different. You're kind, funny, and you have a sort of endearing awkwardness that I find irresistible. Most beings in the universe are so caught up in their own egos and ambitions that they forget to just be. But you, you're genuine. That's rare. Artie felt a warm glow in his chest at her words, but his insecurity still gnawed at him. But my place was such a mess. I mean, most people would have been disgusted. Zilara shrugged. Maybe, but I'm not most people. I'm not even, well, I'm not human, as you probably noticed. Artie couldn't help but laugh at that. Yeah, that part was pretty obvious. She grinned, exactly. So why would I be bothered by a little dirt and clutter? Where I'm from, we don't place such importance on surface appearances. What matters is what's beneath, what's inside. She placed a hand over his heart, her touch warm and reassuring. And what's inside you, Artie, is something truly special. Artie felt a lump form in his throat. He wasn't used to hearing things like this, especially not from someone as remarkable as Zylara. I... I don't know what to say, he whispered. Then don't say anything, Zilara replied, leaning in to kiss him softly on the lips. It was a kiss that felt like a promise, of new beginnings, of possibilities he'd never dared to dream of. When she pulled back, she was smiling again, but there was a seriousness in her eyes that hadn't been there before. Artie, I want to stay, not just for breakfast or for a day, or even for a week. I want to be with you to explore this strange, wonderful universe together. You've shown me something I've never experienced before, genuine connection without pretense or expectation. Artie's heart pounded in his chest. But why me? I'm just, just, just Artie? Zilara finished for him, her smile widening. Exactly, that's why. You're just you and that's perfect. Besides, she added with a playful wink. I've already cleaned the place. It would be a shame to leave now. Artie laughed, a sound that was both joyous and relieved. Well, when you put it that way, 
Zilara's laughter joined his, and for the first time in what felt like forever, Artie felt like he was exactly where he was meant to be. He didn't have much, but with this beautiful, funny, alien girl with him, the possibility were endless. Artie was just beginning to believe that maybe, just maybe, his life had taken a turn for the better when the door to his apartment exploded. One moment he was basking in the afterglow of Zilara's kiss, thinking about how he might actually have a reason to clean up his act and his apartment for good. The next, there was a deafening boom, a blinding flash of light, and the unmistakable sound of splintering wood. When the smoke cleared, Artie found himself staring at a gaping hole where his door used to be. Through the haze, a silhouette emerged, a tall, muscular figure clad in dark, menacing armor that looked like it had been cobbled together from the remains of some unfortunate space creatures. The figure stepped forward, revealing a face that was a cross between a snarling wolf and a disappointed parent. His eyes, sharp and predatory, locked onto Zilara with an intensity that made Artie's blood run cold. Zilara! The figure growled, his voice dripping with a mixture of anger and something that sounded disturbingly like affection. You've been a very, very bad girl. Zilara sighed, her previous warmth replaced by a look of exasperation. Hello, Varkor, she said, her tone flat. I see you've brought the boys with you. Indeed, behind Varkor, a group of equally intimidating figures began to filter into the apartment, each one more dangerous-looking than the last. They were a motley crew of bounty hunters, their armor adorned with various deadly-looking weapons and gadgets. They fanned out, blocking all possible exits, their expressions a mix of excitement and impatience. Artie's heart sank. He had no idea who these people were, but he knew enough to recognize that they were bad news. Very bad news. Varkor took another step forward, his gaze never leaving Zilara. You know, I've chased you across half the galaxy, he said, his voice low and dangerous, and every time you manage to slip away. But not this time, my starshine. This time you're coming back with me. Artie looked at Zilara, his confusion and fear evident. Who? Who is this guy? Zilara gave him a rueful smile. Artie, meet Varkor, my ex. Artie's eyes widened. Your ex? Zilara nodded, her expression a mix of resignation and annoyance. Yes, my ex. He's a bounty hunter, among other things. We had a complicated relationship. Complicated? Varkor scoffed, his eyes narrowing. You broke my heart, Zilara, more than once, and now you're running around with this, this human? Zilara rolled her eyes. It was never going to work, Varkor, you know that. We're too different. Varkor let out a humorless laugh. Different. I loved you, Zilara, and you just left. Zilara sighed, looking at Artie with an apologetic expression. Varker and I have a bit of a love-hate thing. He loves me, I try to leave, he chases me across the galaxy, rinse and repeat. Artie blinked, trying to wrap his head around the situation. So, he's here to, what, take you back? Varker's expression darkened. Oh, she's coming back with me all right, whether she wants to or not. Artie felt a surge of protective instinct, but before he could say anything, Zilara suddenly flashed a wicked grin. Oh, Varkor, you always were so predictable. She raised her wrist, the device on it glowing with a sudden brightness. Before Varkor could react, a series of shimmering, high-tech weapons materialized around her, each one more impressive and terrifying than the last. There were plasma rifles, energy swords, and even what looked like a grenade launcher with glowing blue orbs attached. The bounty hunters took an involuntary step back, clearly recognizing the firepower Zilara had just summoned. Artie's jaw dropped. What, what are those? Zilara winked at him. Just a few toys I picked up along the way. We're going to need them if we want to get out of here in one piece. Varkor's eyes narrowed, but there was a gleam of admiration in them as well. 
Always full of surprises, aren't you, Zilara? But you can't take all of us. Zilara's grin widened. Wanna bet? She looked at Artie, who was still standing there, wide-eyed and overwhelmed. Here, she said, handing him a small, somewhat unimpressive-looking laser pistol. This should help. Artie looked down at the small, unimpressive laser pistol that Zilara had handed him. It was a dull, grey thing, barely larger than a TV remote and completely lacking the menacing flair of the weapons she'd summoned for herself. He tilted it in his hand, feeling its awkward weight, and sighed in disappointment. Uh, Zilara? he asked hesitantly, glancing up at her as she adjusted the grip on a sleek plasma rifle that crackled with energy. Are you sure this is enough? Zilara chuckled softly, her eyes twinkling with a mixture of amusement and affection. Oh, Artie, you're not ready for the big stuff just yet. Trust me, that little guy will do the job. You just need to know when and where to use it. Artie wasn't entirely convinced, but before he could voice any more concerns, Varkor grew impatient. He leveled a pulse cannon at Zilara, his expression a twisted mix of longing and anger. Enough of this, Zilara. You're coming with me, or I'll take you by force. Zilara's eyes narrowed, and she raised her plasma rifle with a fluid, practiced motion. Varkor, you always did underestimate me. That's why we never worked out. Varkor growled, his finger tightening on the trigger of his cannon, and you always overestimated your chances of getting away. What followed was a blur of motion, light, and sound. Zilara moved with the grace of a dancer, her plasma rifle spewing bolts of energy that tore through the air with a high-pitched whine. The bounty hunters scattered, diving for cover behind the sparse furniture in Artie's apartment, which wasn't exactly built to withstand an intergalactic firefight. The room was quickly filled with the acrid smell of burning fabric and the sharp tang of ozone. Artie, for his part, scrambled behind an overturned couch, clutching his tiny laser pistol as if it were a lifeline. He peeked over the edge, watching in awe as Zilara expertly dispatched one bounty hunter after another. Each shot she fired was precise, calculated. She was clearly well-versed in the art of combat. Varka, however, was a different story. He was fast, faster than Artie had anticipated, and despite Zilara's best efforts, he managed to close the distance between them his cannon roaring as it unleashed a barrage of destructive energy. Zelara ducked and rolled, narrowly avoiding the blast, but it was clear she was being pushed back. Varka was relentless, his eyes blazing with a mixture of rage and desperate passion. Zelara! Varka shouted over the din of battle. Why do you keep running? We could have everything together. The galaxy, no, the universe, could be ours. Zilara didn't respond immediately. She was too focused on keeping herself alive and Artie safe, but as she dodged another blast, she fired back a retort, her voice laced with frustration. Varkor, I don't want the galaxy. I don't want to conquer or control. I just want to be free, Varkor snarled, his eyes flashing with something darker. And what about us? You think you'll be free with him? He pointed an accusing finger at Artie, who flinched under the sudden attention. Artie felt a surge of fear, but also a strange sense of resolve. He didn't fully understand what was happening between Zilara and Varkor, but he knew one thing. He wasn't about to let her go back with this guy against her will. Summoning every ounce of courage he had, Artie stood up from behind the couch, his small laser pistol trembling in his hand. Hey, Varkor! he shouted, his voice cracking slightly. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Zilara's eyes widened in surprise as she saw Artie standing there, looking both terrified and determined. Varkor, too, seemed momentarily taken aback, but then he laughed, a deep, mocking sound that sent chills down Artie's spine. Really, human? Varkor sneered. You think that pea shooter is going to stop me? Artie swallowed hard, but he didn't back down. I know it's not much, but I'm not going to let you take Zilara. Not without a fight. 
Zilara felt a strange mix of emotions, pride, fear, and a touch of affection. Artie was in way over his head, but there was something undeniably brave about him standing up to Varkor like this. Varkor's expression darkened, and he took a menacing step toward Artie. You're a fool, human. And I'm going to enjoy making mince meat out of you, human, and add you to my long list of kills. Artie's hands trembled as Varka advanced, a predatory gleam in the bounty hunter's eyes. The situation was beyond desperate. Zilara had been holding her own, but even she couldn't keep up this fight much longer. Artie knew he was out of his depth, armed with a tiny, unimpressive laser pistol against a hulking, heavily armed alien who seemed determined to take Zilara away, whether she liked it or not. Varka snarled, his cannon humming ominously as it charged for another shot. You're out of your league, human. Step aside before you get yourself killed. Artie didn't move. He couldn't let Varkor take Zilara, not after everything they'd shared, not after she'd shown him a world beyond his wildest dreams. He gripped the laser pistol tighter, his palms sweaty, and aimed it at Varka. I'm not letting you take her, Artie said, his voice shaking but resolute. Varkor sneered. You're going to regret that. In that instant, everything seemed to slow down. Varka raised his cannon, preparing to blast Artie into oblivion. Zilara, seeing the danger, tried to move, but she was too far away to stop him. Artie knew he had only one shot, one chance to make a difference. He squeezed the trigger. The laser pistol emitted a thin, underwhelming beam of light, nothing like the powerful blasts Zilara had been firing. It looked almost pathetic, but miraculously, the beam struck home. It hit Varka square in the eyes, a perfect shot that Artie could never have replicated if he'd tried a thousand times. Varko roared in pain, his hands flying to his face as the laser temporarily blinded him. The cannon he'd been aiming at Artie fired wildly, missing its mark by a wide margin and blasting a hole in the wall instead. Debris rained down and the other bounty hunters scattered, unsure of what had just happened. Zilara didn't waste a second. She sprinted across the room, grabbing Artie by the arm. Come on! she shouted, her voice urgent. We've got to get out of here! Artie didn't need to be told twice. He followed Zilara as she led him through the chaos, dodging the remaining bounty hunters who were too disoriented by Varka's cries to give chase. They dashed through the gaping hole in the wall, emerging into the narrow alley outside. The night air felt cool against Artie's skin, a stark contrast to the heat and smoke inside his apartment. But they couldn't stop. Zilara pulled him along, her eyes scanning the darkened streets for any sign of more trouble. Where are we going? Artie panted, struggling to keep up with her. Anywhere but here, Zilara replied, her tone tense. We need to get off planet and fast. Varka won't stay down for long. They ran through the twisting alleys, the sounds of the city around them a blur as adrenaline pumped through Artie's veins. His heart pounded in his chest, and his mind raced with everything that had just happened. He'd just shot an alien bounty hunter in the face with a tiny laser pistol. It felt surreal, like something out of one of the cheap holovids he used to watch. Finally, they reached the outskirts of the city, where a rusty old speeder was parked beneath a flickering street lamp. Zilara hurried to the vehicle and pulled open the door, motioning for Artie to get in. Are you sure this thing still works? Artie asked, eyeing the speeder with skepticism. It'll get us where we need to go, Zilara said, jumping into the driver's seat. Now get in. Artie climbed in beside her, and Zilara slammed her hand down on the ignition. The speeder sputtered for a moment before roaring to life, its engines wheezing like an asthmatic dragon. Zilara hit the accelerator, and they shot off into the night, leaving the chaos of the apartment behind. For a while, neither of them spoke. The city lights blurred past as they sped through the streets, heading toward the spaceport on the outskirts of town. Artie could still feel the adrenaline coursing through him, his mind reeling from everything that had happened. 
He glanced over at Zilara, who was focused on the road ahead, her expression determined but weary. Zilara, Artie finally said, breaking the silence. I, I can't believe that worked. Zilara glanced at him, a small smile tugging at the corners of her lips. You were amazing, Artie. That shot, it saved us. Artie felt a surge of pride, did a little victory dance that was short-lived, with Zilara slapping him in the face with her seemly soft alien hands. Don't get too overconfident. We have a long way ahead of us. I will do my best to cover our tracks. Her demeanor changing from a lovely, cuddly cat to a battle-hardened ready saber-tooth.